Six square feet of LEDs can grow 12 pounds of green fodder in a week. For farmers staring at empty pastures or expensive hay, that promise sounds like relief. Indoor systems claim they use one-tenth the water, zero land, and can feed animals year-round. The question is whether that promise holds up once you add seed, power, and time. So let's test it. How close can LED fodder come to replacing hay in the real world? Hay prices are up 40 to 100% across much of the U.S. Drought has shortened cutting cycles, diesel has doubled hauling costs, and fertilizer still hasn't come back down. Margins on feed are thinner than ever, and for small farms, winter can mean breaking even or falling behind. That's why more producers are experimenting with indoor fodder. Instead of acreage and irrigation, it's trays, lights, and water. A system that fits in a shed can deliver steady feed when nothing outside is growing. On paper, it looks efficient. About one-tenth the water use, no soil loss, and predictable growth no matter the weather. But most systems on the market haven't been tested in working barns or on full rations. The claims sound good, 18% protein, perfect digestibility, low inputs, yet few side-by-side -side comparisons exist. So before calling it the future of feed, it's worth seeing what these systems actually deliver in yield, nutrition, and cost per pound of dry matter. A fodder system isn't complicated, it's controlled germination, nothing more. You soak barley or wheat seed for 12 hours, spread about two pounds per tray, and give it light, warmth, and steady pasture. In six days, that tray turns into a bright green mat. Roots, stems, and sprouts all in one. Each tray uses about a gallon and a half of water and 100 watts of LED light for 12 hours a day. By the end of the cycle, you'll harvest around 12 pounds of fresh fodder, which equals only two pounds of dry matter once you remove the moisture. That's the key metric most people miss. It's not replacing hay pound for pound, it's a supplement. Used right, it stretches stored hay, adds digestible nutrients, and smooths feed quality when pastures are dormant. Now, let's put numbers on it. Each tray takes about two pounds of barley seed, or 40 cents a pound. That's 80 cents per day. Electricity, roughly 1.2 kilowatt hours for the lights and pump, adds about 18 cents. Water is negligible, maybe a penny. Labor is the real hidden cost. 10 minutes a day to soak seed, rinse trays, and feed out. Valued at $3 to $5, that's the difference between a neat idea and a business model. Add it up, roughly $4 per day to produce 12 pounds of wet fodder, or about $2 per pound of dry matter. At $4 a day, a single rack costs about $120 a month. For a 10 goat dairy, that's roughly equal to half a ton of hay, but you're buying consistency, not volume. That's why it's showing up first on micro dairies, not row farms. Compare that to hay. Good grass hay runs 12 to 18 cents per pound of dry matter. That's more than a tenfold difference in feed cost. So purely on math, indoor fodder doesn't replace hay. Well, not yet. But cost isn't the whole story. Its real value shows up in digestibility, feed efficiency, and nutrient density. And that's where the equation starts to shift. On paper, LED fodder is expensive, but nutritionally, it can pull weight where hay can't. Sprouted barley typically tests between 15 and 18 cents crude protein, higher than most mid-grade grass hay. It also delivers live enzymes, vitamin E, and digestible energy that comes from starches being converted into simple sugars during germination. The effect isn't more bulk, it's better feed conversion. Livestock trials from Utah State and the University of Melbourne both found that dairy animals on fodder gain roughly 10 to 15 percent more milk output with no change in total feed intake. Even in university trials, yield per square foot still caps at around 0.35 pounds of dry matter a day. That's roughly 1 15th the feed density of an acre of alfalfa, but it's fully controlled, no drought, no pests, no hauling. It also reduced pellet or grain use by about a quarter, not by replacing hay, but by improving how well the base ration is digested. For, for beef cattle, the economics rarely pencil out. They simply eat too much. But for small ruminants, poultry, and rabbits, the payoff can be real. You're not trying to replace hay. 
you're targeting the most expensive part of the ration, protein and vitamins, with something you can grow year-round. Six square feet of growing space, about the footprint of a small table, can feed three goats or 30 laying hens per day. Scale that to a four-shelf rack and you're producing around 15 pounds of fodder daily. That's enough to supplement one dairy cow or a full pen of small livestock through the off-season. It doesn't require a new building, but it does need a controlled microclimate, clean, warm, and out of direct drafts. Old milk rooms, insulated corners of a barn, or a small greenhouse bay work well. Humidity management is critical. Good airflow keeps the trays clean and mold-free. Power is the main operating cost, and most of it goes toward maintaining warmth rather than light intensity. If your barn already stays above 50 degrees, your lighting costs drop by half because the system isn't wasting energy as heat. Some producers even pair racks with compost heat or exhaust from a nearby brooder or incubator to offset electricity further. Fodder trays don't have to be a closed loop. They fit naturally inside a regenerative one. Every cycle, the drained water that runs off the trays carries dissolved nutrients from the sprouting seed. Instead of dumping it, that fodder tea can feed seedlings or be poured onto compost piles. It's a mild, micro-rich fertilizer that replaces the need for diluted liquid feeds. Leachate tests show it carries about 15 to 30 ppm of nitrate nitrogen and trace enzymes, weak but enough to green seedling trays faster than standard compost tea. If you're running lights, you can also cut their hours. By pairing a fodder rack with a greenhouse bay or a south-facing window, natural daylight handles half the work. That lowers your power use and reduces heat buildup inside enclosed spaces. Even the waste has value. Old root mats can be fed to chickens or composted directly. They break down fast and add texture to the pile. At its best, a fodder system becomes part of a cycle. Grain in equals fodder out equals manure equals compost equals back to grain. It's not replacing your pasture. It's extending the biology that drives it. For all its promise, indoor fodder has real limits. Mold is the biggest one. Even a single contaminated tray can seed spores through the entire system, wiping out a week of growth. Cleanliness isn't optional. It's the difference between feed and loss. Every tray needs daily rinsing and rotation, and the system itself needs full sanitation between cycles. Power is another risk. A 12-hour outage in cold weather can drop temperatures enough to stop growth or sour the trays. High humidity leads to corrosion on racks and poor air quality in small barns if ventilation is ignored. And scaling doesn't simplify it, it multiplies the work. Each additional rack adds trays to soak, rinse, feed, and scrub. Labor doesn't drop as the system grows, it compounds. So you're not automating feed, you're trading field time for tray time. The trade only makes sense if the nutrition, stability, or independence you gain is worth more than the hours you'll spend keeping it running. The farms where fodder systems pay off all have one thing in common, they keep them small. One or two racks is enough to offset part of your grain bill or replace store-bought greens in the off-season. Go any larger and labor starts outpacing value. The returns show up fastest with high-value animals, dairy goats, breeding stock, or poultry, where nutrition directly affects output. For beef or bulk feeders, it rarely pencils out. To make the math work, use free energy whenever you can. A south-facing window or greenhouse corner provides most of the light you need. Barn heat or compost warmth handles the rest. Homemade systems also recover costs far faster than commercial ones. A DIY rack built from shelving, trays, and a cheap timer can break even in four months. Off-the-shelf systems can take more than a year and a half to pay off and usually require higher maintenance costs long-term. No, fodder won't replace hay on any real farm scale, but yes, it can replace up to 40% of your grain, improve feed conversion, and keep animals healthier through the winter months when fresh feed is scarce. If you're feeding goats, poultry, or a few milkers, a single rack might be one of the best $100 projects you build all year. Where it really earns its keep is high altitude or desert operations, where water is scarce and trucking hay costs more than the hay itself. Would you try a small fodder rack to stretch your hay for this winter? 
drop your zone and hertz size in the comments. Let's compare where it actually pays off. And if you want more regenerative systems that produce, not just theory, subscribe and stay tuned for what's next.